Hi all, it's Kimberly and we're back in the studio for another episode of the Lockdown Lectures. And today we're gonna to go back to still life photography. Um, and in this case, we're gonna use a very similar uh, lighting strategy to what we did in the first episode on natural light in the studio. But this time, instead of kind of getting that painterly sort of Dutch light with the deep shadow and the black background, we're gonna do a really high key kind of a look. So I have taken some white, uh, just plain white fabric. Again, you could use a bed sheet or a piece of white paper or just, it doesn't even have to be white, but something light colored. And you could um, create a backdrop, make it a little bit bigger than whatever it is that you're gonna uh, photograph. And again, as I am a still life photographer, I have like a bevy of random objects that are the color that I need. However, you could, you don't have to do things that are all white. You could just think about what would look really nice in a more high key um, setting. Some nice spring flowers, perhaps. I don't know, just some interesting objects from your house. Um, it doesn't really have to make sense too. Just remember that when you're working in still life, you can kind of play. You don't have to think, well, why would this be next to that? You can just do what you feel like doing and see how it comes out. So um, today, if you haven't seen the first video, I'd first recommend just go back and watch that one because I talk about some of the strategies of what I've done here. Um, but if you have watched that video, you'll recall that I have some tracing paper and I actually have two sheets of tracing paper um, over my window. Again, you could use anything that is white and that light could travel through would work perfectly well for this. And you can see it's like a nice big uh, sort of wrap around beautiful light. And when I say a wraparound light, I mean a light that doesn't really throw a hard shadow or anything on this side. You'll notice how soft the shadows are and how even on the shadow side, there's light kind of working its way around. There's not like a hard line between the highlight and the shadow area. The other reason that that's happening is because my white background is actually creating a bounce as if I had a fill card right back behind my objects. My objects themselves are light. And another just random point of this studio is the edge of this um, cabinet is also white. So it's bouncing light back. So I just have light coming from all directions. And if I wanna make it truly high key, I can bounce more light in from various sides and work with that as well. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna work a little bit on setting up some kind of a still life here. So you can see that I have a uh, white pedestal dish or a cream colored pedestal dish and table and my white background. And the first thing I do before I even try to set anything up in a real serious way is I decide sort of what's the tabletop, what's the, is it gonna be a close framing, a wider way framing, how, how am I gonna frame it? And in this case, I have a 50 millimeter lens, which is really one of my favorites. Um, I have a 50 prime lens. Just like before, I'm set on ISO 100 because I like a really fine grain shot. And I'm shooting at f16 and uh, a third of a second, okay? So it's a relatively slow shutter speed. Um, and that's because I'm at ISO 100, but I'm locked down on my tripod, so I don't care, okay? Now again, if you were shooting and you didn't have a tripod, you'd wanna make sure that that shutter speed doesn't go below a 60th of a second. Okay, so I have my um, like white objects and I'm gonna kind of work on the framing, which to be honest with you, I already have. And um, just right out of the can, I can take a shot. And obviously there's not enough objects in here, I haven't really worked it out, but we'll take a shot and see that there is, and I will, I will add this in, in, uh, in post here, uh, post on the video that is, but you can see that there's a um, sort of a little bit of a shadow on the right hand side, but it's a pretty bright high key. And we're just getting like a little shadow right here, which actually is kind of nice for definition, but we might not want it to be there. We might want it to be even brighter, okay? Um, if we want it to be even brighter, whoopsie, uh, you can add a white card in and you'll notice again as I'm holding this white card It's really filling it in so that it's it's almost like a flat lighting It's a really even lighting, but it's it's flat because everything has equal light It's this is what I call Martha Stewart lighting. No offense, Martha um, And this actually it's, has quite a few uses But I can go like this too and hopefully you can see in the video that I can sort of decide where I might want to fill those shadows I like it actually a little wider, so I can take another test shot to see what that might look like, get a little bit more light on the scene. Okay, and that should brighten up those shadows quite nicely, although they're still there. 
um, but less so, especially this edge of the table. And if I want, if you look down here, if I want to eliminate this shadow, I can even go like this and I can bounce some light kind of underneath the table. So I'll do that. Let me see if I have to. And the nice thing about this with daylight is you, you can just see it in real time. So just move your uh, board until it looks how you want it to look and then snap the shot. And that should fill in that back area quite a bit and makes it sort of even, okay? So now I wanna actually think about composition, think about how I'm gonna build a shot. And um, this is a little extra difficult because it's white on white, but I actually like the challenge of white on white in high key because you need to expose the image bright enough so that it has that high key look, but you can't go over on your exposure or else you're gonna lose some highlight detail somewhere. So you wanna have a bright shadow, a bright highlight, and sort of um, everything in between, which isn't much, okay? Everything's in the sort of the same tonal range. Now, just to be kind of on point here, and also just to showcase the amount of toilet paper I have, uh, I am going to create a still life with rolls of toilet paper. Why not? Topical, okay? So this will also add to the difficulty level because as you can see, we're dealing with white, on white. Now another thing to keep in mind when you are dealing with objects on a table or anywhere else is that it's better to have odd numbers of things. So three is better than two, five is better than four, unless you're trying to do something that's really all about symmetry. Just the way that sort of balance works and the eye reads things, it's more uh, pleasing if we can have an odd number of things. And I'm not going to lay these out right here. Students who've heard me give a lecture on um, still life photography before will recall that I refer to this as the yard sale um, composition, meaning that like, oh, I have a table and I'm just gonna like, I don't know, I'm worried about my lighting, I'm not thinking about my composition, let me just, I'll put these things in a row, that'll be good, okay? But this is really boring, okay? So not to say that it's gonna be a real thriller with some toilet paper or stacked on our whatever, but you know, we're gonna make the most interesting version of this we can. So I'm going to, um, stack these and I'm like a huge fan by the way of things that are precarious I just love the idea of a thing that's like maybe seems like it shouldn't quite be standing I know this is probably making a lot of people nervous this is the kind of thing that makes my Dutch mother nervous okay so I'm gonna do that because that seems like a little bit more dynamic now let me look through my frame and see how that looks I'm sure this is thrilling everyone at home here oh yeah this is a real thriller okay it's kind of fun, okay? Now, what I forgot to do was I forgot to put my uh, fill card in. I'd like, I'd like to have a version with the fill card and without the fill card. So I can put the fill card in and maybe make that brighter, just trying to stay out of frame. And then the other thing I can do is if I want the shadow to actually be deeper, that looks pretty good. If I want the shadow to be deeper, I can do the opposite, even though I'm doing high key. We're getting all the way over here. I could decide that I'm gonna add black in here and again just like in the last video I hope and I think you can see that if I put the black in all of a sudden my shadows become much more deep and this thing is still high key but it has a different kind of dimensionality to it so I'm going to shoot that as well because I like to have options okay um, and so it's just filling in the shadows uh, differently a little darker versus a little lighter um, and I might frame it up even a little bit differently but before I do that I want to add a little bit more drama to it. So I think I'm gonna see if I can get two more rolls of toilet paper on. Dun, 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 dun. This is like the weirdest challenge ever. I'm gonna see if I can get two more rolls of toilet paper on there. And then I'm gonna create a little forward momentum with my composition as well. So let's see. What I mean by forward momentum, it's right now my, um, I'm creating some verticality in my frame, but everything's kind of on this plane. I mean, yeah, the table's coming forward, but everything's kind of on this plane. And I want something to come out towards the viewer. I like the tension that that creates. Let me see if I still have enough room for one more roll of toilet paper here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna adjust my shot slightly so I have a little bit more height there. Perfect, okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this roll of toilet paper on, but inspired by Dutch still Lives, where they have like the peeled lemon Okay, I'll have to see if I can cut in a, an image of this type of still life that I'm talking about. I'm going to do my version of the peeled lemon here, which is going to be the toilet paper, perhaps. Let's see if we can do this artfully. Nobody sneeze. I'm gonna twist it a little here because I just think it'll be more interesting if I twist it, don't you? 
And now let me tell you something you'll recall in my last video that I mentioned that you could use some uh, like plastic trash bags to hang over your window to create diffuse light. And I was thinking, imagine if you like put some trash bags over your window to create some nice diffuse light and then you were taking pictures of toilet paper inside your house. You definitely, definitely, definitely would get some stares from the neighbors there. Hmm, I'm still not in love with this, but let's just see what happens if I let it kind of come off. It might not be bad. Let's see what that looks like. Hmm. Might be a little too central, but that's kind of interesting. Who knows? Okay. And then, I don't know. I'm not so sure how I feel about the piece coming out in the front. So I'm going to work it a little bit more, but um, I'm going to try, I'm going to maybe twist. I'm going to have to hold this. I'm going to maybe even twist this around here a little bit. I need a little bit more toilet. Look at this. I'm wasting precious toilet paper. So here we go. What if we do that? Who knows? Who knows? Sure, that might do it. That might do it. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. You know, don't take yourself too seriously. Just like try to do it. See what happens. Sometimes you get these great surprises. And sometimes not. It's all good. Okay, now I'm going to work this for another little bit and make a few variations and I'll show you those in the video. And then I'm going to change up to another sort of um, high key kind of a scheme or actually a slightly different composition even within the same scheme. So I'll be back.